And we are live if you graduated college within the last two to three years or if you identify as a Gen Zer or even a cusper, then while graduating college, you may have heard questions like, oh, what are you going to do next? What's next? Are you going to grad school? Do you land a full-time role? And if you're able to answer those questions, great, good for you. You moved on to the next level of questions, which kind of like digged into whether or not you were passionate about these new path that you were pursuing and the why behind it. Very intrusive if you ask me, but I realized it was and is normalized because we are taught from a very early age, whether explicitly said in speeches or in media or implicitly said in assumptions that we should follow our passions and make sure that we spend our life doing something that we love without being taught the how to. There are countless tests and videos that kind of claim to teach young people how to do xyz how to find your passion and find your purpose and we think of this as something that's outward rather than something that's inward that is already there and that we kind of just need to tap into and so speaking of from experience i kind of went through quarter life crisis that i've spoken about before where i was very anxious about like what my next step is and my feelings towards it and how i was supposed to feel rather than how i was feeling so when values come into play, we think about work and a career or vocation, whatever you want to call it, as something that allows your values to be manifested rather than what the thing is itself. So for example, if someone values justice and advocacy and community, something that would be a good fit for them would be law right? or a civil rights activist or a civil attorney. So you search for a career that fulfills your values rather than trying to to make something else fit so you literally are fulfilling your values every day okay let's cut to it what are values and why are they actually important to us right so as i had said before when we talk about purpose and passion it's usually something that we have to go chase and find and figure out whereas your values are kind of already there you've been acting in your values this entire time, right? So it's just for us to bring awareness to it. So according to sociologists, social scientists, psychologists, the articles that I've read, I've come to understand that in the simplest terms, values are your guiding principles, the set of things that you believe and you make decisions based off of, usually unconsciously, which is crazy the two main characteristics of values that i found very interesting and you'll see why when i kind of start to talk about how to find your values is that one your values are beliefs that evoke either a strong emotion within you or they prompt you to take action so for example if you really value independence right when you're in a situation where your independence feels threatened or you can't like act in a way that you want to, then you're gonna feel helpless or just more irritated than the person who independence isn't really that big of a deal to. Whereas if you're in a space where you're able to have control and autonomy over the things you do, for example, at work, you're gonna feel more empowered, you're gonna be happier, and you're going to seek out different situations, opportunities, and spaces where you're able to have that independence versus someone who independence is not that much of a value to. The second characteristic that was very interesting that I came across in reading is that your values are your criteria, obviously, but they're also ranked in order of importance. So we literally have a ranking system and we have certain values that, okay, are great. And then certain values that, okay, this doesn't really matter that much to me. So for example, if you, value independence but you also value tradition and you value tradition way more than you value independence then in some cases for example maybe in like a traditional relationship or different customs that you have to do for your tradition if that impedes on your independence then you're fine with it you're like okay fine it's not that big of a deal because you value tradition so much that if it nudges and bleeds over into your independence you're fine with it because that's what you really value 
anyways. So those two things were kind of the guiding principles that lead me into my next section, which is how do we go about identifying our values in the first place? How do I know I'm not being influenced by outward, like social media and outward influences? Just like, how do I really know? And the short answer is that <laughs> I don't think you will overnight. It's a work in progress. It's not like something that is just one and done. It's something that you kind of continuously have to sit with and ask yourself which I think is just overall life and bringing awareness to it is the first step. While going through my dilemma, I stopped to ask myself questions like what were some big decisions I was making in my life? You know, I'm only 24, but what were big decisions that I made in my life that were hard and what criteria did I use, whether it was conscious or unconscious, to make those decisions? Like, that's a huge question. Secondly, I thought about times when I felt very emotional about something, whether it was really good, something that was so positive or something awful that happened and I was just very angry. So the first thing that came to mind regarding that was the nonprofit that I run back at home, Gratsuno Jamaica, and our first forum that we had. And I was so content because I had a positive impact and I could see the number of people who were impacted. I kind of just thought more about that and along those lines and I came up with the value of me wanting to have a positive impact and that has been consistent throughout the things that I've been involved in within high school, within college, at work. That's something that I've seen as a common thread. So you want to start looking at like the big things that had really heavy emotions attached to it and then think about okay, is there a common thread here? Why is there that common thread? Thirdly, if you're looking for a bit more of a workshop tool, then I'd suggest you get the Young and Thriving Planner. It's an organization that my best friend and I, we co-lead and we make tools for young people to thrive. And a huge part of it is our defining of our personal mission statements. So we start out first with you just writing a list of 10 to 15 values that align with you. So this could be things like ambition, excellence, freedom, impact, and then you kind of go through and define, okay, what do those things mean to me? What's my personal definition of those things? From that, you select the top three ones that stand out the most to you. So mine was innovation and creativity, positive impact, and just taking action. And then I use those to write my personal mission statement and what a successful year looks like for me using that. So that's just an example of how your personal mission statement can be brought to life and actually used to have impact within your life. So for example, using my values, right? At work, very early in career, but I've kind of seen it played out where I am frustrated or I'm probably mad at myself or I don't get energy from doing tasks or things that I don't feel have value. And I know I'm early in career, but it's just, if I don't see the value within it and how it's gonna impact my team and make people's lives greater, then I don't get energy from it. And I get energy from working on new ideas, things that have impact, and being able to act on the ideas and bring them to life. I know this will probably change or I'll probably find better words to articulate what I mean, but having the awareness and seeing how it has actually manifested in, for example, my working life and actually affected how I feel about my role and my job is a great first step if you ask me. So that's how I've applied values to my career so far. So I know what I'm looking for in my work. I know what I'm looking for in fitness and relationships. I know what I'm looking for and I'm not searching for something outward to gauge and kind of guess what I should be feeling like. I now know what I'm looking for. So if this resonated with you, I know this video is on the longer side. Let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments and what do you think your values are and you can get the values worksheet at the link below in the young and thriving planner digitally or physically until next time see ya